So far in this series, we've figured out the basic mechanics and values behind most of Mario's actions, as well as how they work on the moon. The last major aspect of the game to dive into is how that movement changes when Mario captures something. There are 52 unique captures in the game, so we won't be covering all of them today. The first capture we are introduced to is the frog. Frogs walk at 10 speed. Dashing increases the speed to 15, which is slightly faster than Mario walks. Jumping with a frog gives it 38 vertical speed while the button is held. For some reason, the second frame of this is actually 40, even though the speed value doesn't change. If the jump button is held at least 10 frames, the frog enters a different phase of the jump, where it accelerates to 40.7 vertical speed for up to 20 frames. After the jump is finished, the normal gravity of 1.5 applies to the frog. Now, if you've seen part 3 of the series, you know that the gravity in this game is strange. It can be many different values based on the action Mario is doing, and it isn't exactly realistic. But believe me, we have only scratched the surface on just how absurd gravity in this game can be. I present the humble Goomba, a staple in Mario games dating back decades. At first glance, it appears similar to the frog. A walking speed of 10 and a dashing speed of 15 just like the frog. But let's discuss what happens when this thing leaves the ground. Its vertical speed at first is 14. When it starts to decelerate, the first frame of gravity is 1.625. But then, it decreases by 1% each subsequent frame. That's right. The force of gravity decelerates with exponential decay while the Goomba is in midair. But that's not all. 8.5% of the Goomba's horizontal speed is added to the initial vertical speed, and 1% of that additional speed is added to the initial gravity. So the equation modeling the gravity a Goomba experiences in the air would be the initial 1.625 plus the 1% of 8.5% of horizontal speed, or 0 .00085 times h, times that 1% per frame decay, which is 0.99 to the x. But, this 1.625 value is after the first frame of deceleration, so it'll be 0.99 to the x minus 1. In the end, we want to predict the Goomba's position, but what we have is a second derivative of position. So, taking this integral, we get this. And it should be equal to 14 when x and h are equal to 0. So, there we go. And the velocity equation is 0 0.085 times 0 0.99 to the x times 1911.76 plus horizontal speed minus 148.5. The position equation is what we get after taking the antiderivative again, which is this. There is a small quirk in how these equations work, because the game calculates these values frame by frame rather than continuously, but I think we've gone down the math rabbit hole here enough. For now, just know that the way I've set up the equations, the velocity starts at 14 and the position starts at 0. To apply these equations to situations where the jump button is held, or the Goomba has horizontal speed, you would need to adjust them so they start at the appropriate value. For example, let's say the button is held all 10 frames. The Goomba's trajectory can be modeled with a piecewise function, with y equals 14x over the domain of 0 to 10, and the position equation from earlier, with x replaced with x minus 10, and an additional 140 height to begin with after the first 10 frames. In this case, the Goomba reaches a height of just over 209. Now, I could spend another hour discussing the math of Goombas, but this video is already a month late as I write this, so let's move on. Bullet Bills can go up to around 12 speed without acceleration, and around 36 with acceleration. These numbers don't appear to be hard limits like with the Goomba and Frog. In the testing I've done, it seems like bullet bills accelerate up to this figure, but can increase beyond it a little bit with time. Glidon has a gliding speed of 29. When he stops gliding, the downward acceleration he experiences starts at around 1.3 and decreases each frame by about 0.03. 
the numbers for Glidon aren't exact either, as it's difficult to isolate them. Cheep Cheeps can swim at up to 20 speed. Doing a spin by pressing Y and B does not increase the speed cap beyond this. If the Cheep Cheep is already at max speed, its speed will remain at 20 throughout the spin. Paragoombas fly at 16 speed. They also have a height limit of 280 above their spawn location. This Paragoomba's initial Y coordinate is negative 1450, so it can't go above negative 1170. Moais walk at 20 speed without the sunglasses on, and 4 speed with sunglasses on. Lakitu flies at approximately 10.3 speed. The cactus hops at about 8 speed, but this decreases if the cactus gets too far away from its spawn. Interestingly, no upward vertical movement shows up. The hopping action appears to be a purely visual phenomenon. The same goes for an uproot when it stretches. The uproot is getting taller, but no vertical speed is registered because the value we are looking at for Y position is measured at the floor, and the uproot hasn't left the floor yet. Its walking speed is 14. When it does leave the ground, the vertical position updates by as much as a thousand. The initial downward acceleration is 3.05, which then decreases by a decreasing... I'm not doing this again. The tank drives at 11 to 12 speed. It's a little bit inconsistent, so I wasn't able to get a hard number for max speed. The coin coffer has a maximum speed just below 10, and when it jumps, the vertical speed is 18, which can be extended to 10 frames. The downward acceleration begins at 1.665, and then decreases by 1% each frame, just like the Goomba. Here is a chart that summarizes the information we've covered. Remember that this doesn't include all the captures yet, nor does it include motion controls. Yuzu did recently add support for motion controls, so I'll be gathering data on that soon. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss that.